you ready? It's the Roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. Welcome to the Roundtable, everybody. You're listening to us on the Broadway Podcast Network, watching us on Broadway World or on our social media. I am so excited to partner with Tribeca every single year. The place to be in New York City, especially in June, is at Tribeca with all the up and coming filmmakers or people who have like a hundred episodes of television directed and filmed and have already won awards like our guests today. Look, Armani, before you meet me, I just want to let you know I'm offer only. So when you when you want me to be in the next episode, you just submit a direct. I'm so excited. I love Maxine's Baby. We, we debuted it last year. We talked about it last year with his co-director. We watched his films. We watched what he does. And this video is so gorgeous. Armani Ortiz, welcome to the show. Wow, what an amazing, amazing intro, Robert. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And also, we have to talk about your shirt right now. Oh, come on, East 161st Street. Yankees. There's, let's go, Yankees. There's no, there is no other sports team, especially in baseball. Exactly. And also, I went to high school right around Yankee Stadium, so it was, it's, it's perfect. See, perfect. I had to, I had to show some representation uh, for for the, especially with this project. So. NL Bronx Part Two. The, firstly, before we talk about the song and the casting and the dance, the look, your yeah. cinematography, the way that you shot this is gorgeous. How did it come about? I mean, first of all, the cinematography. Shout out to Nelson Hume. He was also uh, a deep RDP for Maxine's Baby. That's how me and him got connected. Um, but the way uh, NL Bronx started was we back in 2020, COVID was happening, and you know I fell in love with the song by by Ozuna. Um, called Del Mal. And I was like, wow, man, I really feel like I can make this musical like a brand new musical for like young people to enjoy. And, you know, and like people from my barrio, like from, from the Bronx, from that listen to reggaeton and, and just like a different spin on like what West Side Story would be if it happened today. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's a little bit, you know, toxic relationship. It's a little bit here and there. And when we put it out, you know, it was just a passion project and out of nowhere, it hit 30 million views. So everyone started asking what's part two. And I was like, okay, well, I need to, uh, you know, recollect my funds because I kind of depleted them to make part one. And then uh, after three years, I was searching for the story and we were, you, you and I were talking about for Max and Baby when we were doing the press run, kind of got in my head where I was like, oh, I think I'm ready for part two. And then uh, I, I teamed up with uh, Sandy Alvarez, our, our choreographer, who works on uh, Lion King on Broadway. And um, and then the rest was history. And, you know, thankfully, we came, we, we brought it out, part two, and now we're in Tribeca. You could stream it. It's on, it's on YouTube. If you want to stream stream the, the music video, make sure you go and stream it. Subscribe to his YouTube video because they put out content all, all of the time. And it's about a wedding. I mean, it's the, the song... The wedding, the festiveness, the drama of it all, the dancing, the costumes, it's gorgeous. No, no, no. It's, it, the way it all came about, it was fantastic. And the first thing that we wanted to do was really make sure that part two was the opening of a film. We went, we didn't want it to feel as if it was just like a rinky dink, someone who just had a camera. We wanted to, it to really feel cinematic. And when we were able to put all the beautiful costumes together and with the choreography, which took me forever to learn, by the way, um, I think that we, we really just struck gold. And hopefully, you know, we have an opportunity to make it part three, which is hopefully going to be in cinemas and, and make it a full fledged movie. They did. They did not make it easy for you. That dance there. Y'all are dan there's dancing. There's dancing. Yes. Yes. So a, a nerdy filmmaker question: When you when you reach out to a giant artist, when you have an artist like like Ozuna or Bad Bunny or these people, how do you? What is the pitch? What do you say? Can I use your music? Do you do you do you ask permission later? Do you ask for forgiveness? Like how does it work? You, oh, I think as a as an indie filmmaker, you always ask for forgiveness. You, you <laughs> never really ask for permission first. And you know, thankfully, when we made both of them, we we didn't really ask for permission until. Uh, it got to the level where right before we wanted to put it out, we wanted to show the artist, say, hey, look, like this is not us trying to exploit, you know, what you created and the art that you that you, you know, given the world. But rather it's something that we show with respect and say, hey, like you have inspired me and moved me to make this piece of art along with yours. And I hope that, you know, it can, you know, show what you've made into the world some honor. So with that, 
we were able to truly get the permission and blessing from Bad Bunny and Ozuna. And it was something that, you know, means a lot to me because from my community and especially like like Latinos, Dominican, Puerto Rican, you know, Colombian, all those people, like we kind of like galvanized together and like for them to show that type of um, grace for me. And, you know, obviously I'm not an artist that anyone knows yet, hopefully, but um, it just meant the world. They're, oh, we're gonna all know. We know your work. We we watch your work. We know we're we're ready. And while 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 he's on the come up, before he doesn't remember any of us, you gotta follow him on Instagram. Oh my lord! Stop. You know, it. come on. I, I just we all know a star when we see one. We know what's happening. We're ready. We're not hanging out with Tyler Perry and Oprah on red carpets. You know, that's that's your life. Let me tell you something, Ro. You are doing a fantastic job of getting casted for the actual film of part three. So, like, keep, just keep it up, and you got it. <laughs> that's you, just, you that's, know how to dance. I, I mean, as much as a, an Italian white boy from Jersey can dance, you know, I could give a little two and four snap. Hey, that's that's all we need. If you could do a two step, you could you could dance. That's it. That I'm in. I'm in. You're you're. Uh, I teach. I'm a teacher in 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 uh, North Bergen and here in Jersey as well, and we teach uh, musical theater in Newark, New Jersey. And it's so important that art is given to communities that are forgotten about. You know, wow. you your journey, your story uh, is so inspiring. W at what point did you say like filmmaking, directing, being an artist was something that was important to you when you were growing up? Wow, I think you're the first person to actually ever ask me that in any interview that I've ever been in. I think I, it started when I was in the sixth grade with uh, my teacher, Matthew Kerr. Um, he was friends with the director that made Half Nelson. And he came in and he, with Ryan Gosling, he came in, he did these short films with us. And uh, I fell in love from there. I wanted to be an actor. And then my parents, you know, being immigrant parents, they were like, you're gonna be an accountant, let's, let's take it easy. And then uh, little by little, I, I learned how to edit on iMovie in high school. And then in college, I was like, all right, I think I'm gonna take this seriously. I, I took out a, a student loan, I bought a camera. And then the rest was history. And, you know, obviously, like growing up in New York City in the Bronx and like, you know, going to uh, in the Heights and, and doing all these things on Broadway, which, uh, you know, because we had an inner city program through our high school, we got free tickets. You know, it was it was something that kind of like expanded my, my imagination of what could be possible and like kind of allows you to see past the four walls of like where you're from. And I think that's 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 beautiful. And I hope and I know that, you know, just from talking to you, like you do that for your kids. So, like, that's awesome. No, I, I, it's so moving to me because I know that there is a moment when you have this bug, this artistic bug. There's a moment that sparks something in us. And then but you take it and you ran with it. So if it, if through college and then through your career, you've taken it. And now you you give people you get to call people and give them jobs and give them their chance to shine and do their art. That's like you, Robert. I'm gonna call you, so get ready. I'm ready. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be in the studio, rehearsal space, learning my steps. When you was there a moment when you get called when you when you're on a set, if it, when you're on a television set, when you're when you're in Atlanta at Tyler Perry Studios or wherever you're filming in LA, New York, is there a moment where you think like, oh my, like was there a moment where it was like, they have, this is what I dream. This is the dream. You're doing it. Yeah, I, th I think that uh, I th it still happens almost every day because we, we at Tyler Perry Studios, we always like start our day off with a prayer and we're like, hey, like, you know, try to like galvanize everyone to be like, hey, be present, be in this moment. Um, but I think that right before I did my first ever like DGA directing episode, uh, I was just like, I was just so nervous that I couldn't sleep the day before. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is it. Like you everything that you've said that you wanted to be, you are technically officially a director after t after tomorrow. And it was, uh, I think I was bouncing off the walls like the first like two, three hours of set that they were like, Armani, no more Red Bulls, chill out. You got it. The cast likes you, you're, you're, you're getting your shots. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, so, but it was, it was a surreal moment, but it's still a surreal moment because it's just so many people want to, to, to be in this business and, to have the opportunity to make other people's dreams come true. Hopefully I can do that for a long time. And you are. And, and if you stream Maxine's baby, if you have not seen it, which I don't know where, why you haven't, we, we've talked about it, <laughs> we've been doing it, but it's such an inspiring story and, and a story at the heart of a family, of, you know, 
Yeah, no, for sure. Maxine Baby is is something that, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity and, and project for me. We spent 10 years making it and, you know, following Tyler for for all those years, I've learned so much, not only about the filmmaking process, but rather of like why it's important that we're able to tell our stories from our paintbrush. And, you know, as we continue to get older and as we continue to kind of understand what your artistic expression is, um, you never want to lose the fact that like you are able to paint a, a, a photo that no one else can. And, you know, Tyler is the, the living you know example of that. So hopefully, you know, people are able to see Maxine's baby. Um, we're on an Emmy campaign right now. So hopefully, you know, we, we continue to, to inspire people to see it. And we, um, yeah, it's just, it's just incredible. So I hope you guys get to watch it because it, it's done so much for me. It, it, it's, it's beautiful. It's so inspiring. And then if you want to have fun, if you want to have a good time, you want to watch something six minutes of your life that is going to give you some joy and some great looks and some good music, you, you got to check it out. What was it like when you heard you were going to be in Tribeca? I, I literally... It's one probably like the happiest I've ever been because it's my first ever festival um, to be seen by my peers, to be a uh, part of this historic festival. And I'm from New York. Tribeca is a place that like hopefully one day I get to live and have an apartment there. Um, but I was in the gym and my business partner and manager, Danny Lezioni, called me and he was like, he, we got into Tribeca and like I just started screaming. Like, like, I'm not even joking. I started screaming and they were like, Security came to like you're right. I'm like, oh, I'm just happy. Don't worry about it. And then, uh, no, it was it was incredible. I'll I'll, I'll literally legit never forget that moment. Well, researching some of the festival and, and talking to some people who have videos out, thousands and thousands of videos were submitted, and I think they only picked ten. I think there's ten. So to wow. be able to, to be a part of this, um, uh, congratulations! It's so well deserved. It's so beautiful. Man, thank you so much. I'm going to live in the moment because this is one of those things where you don't want to like, you know, like your wedding day, you kind of just don't remember anything. Like I want to remember every single part of, of this. So I'm very thankful for, for everything. Well, we're going to follow you. Follow Armani Ortiz on Instagram and then make sure you check out the music video on YouTube. It's there now. You can watch it and stream it and, and, and share it. Uh, and we, we root for you. We, we're, we're like, let's, let's go. Let's, we're ready for you to fly. Keep going. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. And when I get this, when I get this movie done, I need you to come on set and, and really like, at least like do like a, a real, like exclusive piece. Oh, anything for you. I, I'm just, I'm just, a, I'm just a fan and your story and, and your heart and all the art that you put out there. Any, anything. I appreciate you spending time with me today. Wow. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. How much do we love him? Armani Ortiz, y'all. He's going to be a big star. He's going to be a big director, and he's going to be a big star. And then we're all going to say, like, wow, we had him first. We had him first on the round table. I wish I knew Spanish. You know, Maxine's Baby was really a beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful film. And uh, the fact that he did that, um, and we had a little piece of talking about it was really special. And then the fact that they documented something for 10 years. Oh, my Lord. If you documented my life for the past 10 years, you would have got a movie. <laughs> Everybody, I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you check out the music video. I hope you enjoy our coverage of Tribeca and Pride and Broadway and the Tony Awards and life and uh, everything that we're doing. I'm excited to have you here. If you like what you're watching and you or listening to, then you can follow me at Robert and Bannon, or you can go to robertbannon.com. Make sure you listen to us on the Broadway Podcast Network every single day. We're live on YouTube on Thursday nights with the best of artists talking about art. And uh, we also are on Broadway World on Fridays for exclusive conversations with some of Broadway's biggest stars. And I also sometimes take a nap, and I also sometimes am grateful, and I'm also sometimes excited about how great it is that you're listening. And I so appreciate you more than I can ever say. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to being with you next time. My name is Robert Bannon, and I'll see you then. <laughs>